Bienvenidos a Mexico. Hey, how's it doing? How's it going? We're sitting here in Leon, Mexico. Not the place we thought we'd be tonight. We thought we'd be in uh, Tlaque Paque, but uh, we didn't make it there. Um, principally because we ran out of gas. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we didn't completely run out of gas. We, got, we had enough to go uh, take a little detour to get us to, to Leon. But uh, we certainly didn't get to uh, Tlaque Paque. And uh, at this point in time, we don't know when we'll get to Tlaque Paque. But that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because we're here to uh, explore Mexico. And uh, we're going to make the lemonade out of lemons. And uh, we're going to see, uh, we're gonna see uh, Leon. So what have you learned about Leon so far, so, Bob? Leon, Leon is uh, the fourth most populous city in Mexico. That's about a million and a half people in the uh, in the city proper itself. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, the center of uh, leather work here in Mexico. So uh, you know, we're going to go see some of the sites tomorrow. Maybe see some buy of the shoes. Leather. Maybe buy some shoes. And uh, can't take too many shoes because they're not going to fit in our car. But uh, now we're yes, gonna, they will. we're going to do some <laughs> we're going to do some exploring here. And uh, maybe wait out a couple of days until uh, until we you know we get some gas. But uh, first first before we talk about the gas, you know we uh, we have to at least uh, you know start our first night, well, actually our second or our third night here in Mexico with a little tequila. If I can actually get it out of the bottle. We didn't realize that it's a skill tequila bottle opening 101. Yeah, and uh, I am certainly Ooh. not the expert at it. That is strong. Yeah, there you go. And that's why we got the tequila. So, salud. Salud. Mm. Ah. Woo. Oh, I can feel that. So, when we left uh, Pennsylvania about a week ago now, about eight days ago now, yeah, we knew that there was uh, they having some problems here with gas in uh, in Mexico. And so not, tell them what's going on with the gas in Mexico, yeah. Bob. So it's not that there's no gas. What the, the problem is is the, the distribution of gas. So over the years, um, the, uh, the cartels have gone and started tapping the gasoline distribution pipelines in Mexico. Now to the point that uh, Mexico was losing about $3 billion, $3 billion U.S. dollars a year in, uh, in, in gasoline to uh, what they call here in Mexico the huachileros. Huachil and how many and, uh, taps are there? So the, tap, the taps on these pipelines, there's about 14,000 kilometers worth of pipelines here in Mexico, and uh, the government estimates there's over 12,000 taps in those lines. So there's a massive amount of taps. Uh, it's obviously not, I mean, this is a professional, um, you know, professionals have to go and tap these, tap these gas pipelines. So it's, a profession, it's professionally done. But there's a new government in Mexico. A new president came in in December, and he was elected on a platform of finally cracking down on corruption in Mexico. And much to our chagrin, he's decided to start it with the gasoline. Yep. And so, you know, to do that, they basically uh, shut down all the distribution through the gas pipelines. And uh, what yay. they yeah, yeah. And what they were going to do is, uh, you know, truck in everything on tanker trucks. Well, they grossly underestimated the, uh, the amount of uh, work that would require. Uh, probably also didn't factor in the amount of, uh, amount of gasoline that was flowing into gas stations through the black market. And how many tanker trucks they, trucks they have <laughs> yep. in Mexico. So gas stations are, are running dry. That didn't affect just the first day and a half that we were here in Mexico. Um, and, we, and we knew that ground zero for the gasoline distribution problem you know, was in the Guadalajara area, was in uh, Guantan. Um, Guanajuato, which is which is where we had to go through, uh, but you know we always had a plan of uh, stopping in San Luis Potosi and uh, filling up one last time, you know, to make it to Guadalajara. However, on our drive here yesterday, you know, we uh, we ended up taking a, a new toll road, a new quota, and uh, there were no Pemex stations there in the San Luis Potosi area, and pretty soon we were in uh, uh, Guanajuato. Ground and zero. Ground zero, and the first the first gas station that we saw. You know, after after that toll road, you know, it was empty. Cerrado. And uh, you know, there there were people lined up for it. We said, okay, let's go to the next let's go to the next place, next town, which is Lagos de Morenos. And we knew that there were five or six gas stations there. We went by every one of those, no gas in them. 
So now we're running a little low on the gas tank. We know we didn't have enough to make it to Guadalajara. There's no big cities between where we were and Guadalajara. And you know, if we had to look for a place with our cats, you know, that would have been extraordinarily difficult, if not impossible. So he's talking about lodging. That lodging. might have been hard to find any sort of cat-friendly lodging in the middle of nowhere. It is. So we decided to take a left. We took a left. And, and go 42 minutes to Leon, which is a big city, and we figured maybe they'd have gas. And that sound you hear is all the perros on the rooftops nearby. <laughs> the dogs have a grand old time having their evening bark. Yeah, but uh, guess what? You know, we passed in about another 10 gas stations here on Leon and, and nothing here. Cerrado. So we, uh, we booked the first hotel, the first pet friendly hotel that we could find. Uh, very nice, <clears throat> one of the nicest places we stayed, but a little on the pricey side. So uh, we also didn't know how long we were going to be here because uh, it's not going to be short term. doesn't seem like it's going to be a short term thing. We're going to be here for at least a few more days. and uh, Maybe a week. Maybe I booked a week, a week at, a, at an Airbnb, a two bedroom Airbnb in this hilltop neighborhood. And she takes cats and she doesn't charge extra. And it's beautiful and adorable, kind of small, but cozy and cute, and $28 a night, including a washer dryer. Yep, so we're here. You know, we're uh, going to go sightseeing tomorrow. We're not going to uh, worry about the gas until maybe Tuesday. And uh, hopefully, uh, we've already heard some rumors that uh, they're going to start uh, you know, beefing up the distribution, but it's going, to take, it's going to take a long time for that to get all straightened out at this point, because with so many gas stations, so many gas stations completely out. You know, it means that people are running dry all over and uh, you know, anything that comes into any of those gas stations is going to get sucked into tanks uh, immediately. And, uh, you know, okay, enough about the gas. Enough about the gas. Hey, but that's why, you know. We're going to we're say here. cheers, see you later, and we'll report back to you when we've discovered All about, Leon, all about Leon. Mexico. Cheers. Hasta luego. So here we are in Tlaque Paque, our fourth day here. And lo and behold, the local gas station just got gas. And as we can see here, there's a massive line for a gas station at the, our local gas station in Tlaque Paque. So this situation isn't going away anytime soon. This guy here is pushing his car. This is just blocks and blocks. Lisa and I came out here an hour and a half ago. And uh, this is like right outside of our, right outside of uh, where our apartment is. And, uh, this thing goes for blocks and blocks before they even get to the gas station. So, you can see the people up there pushing their car out of the gas. Uh, because it's unbelievable that they haven't resolved this yet. Hasta la vista, and may your suitcases be messy too. Subscribe to our channel. Gracias.